what can you do with FreeBSD anywhere? I often describe how easy it is to install FreeBSD. In this video, I will show you what you can do with FreeBSD. I won't be covering any server uses, as that is a video in itself, but rather desktop orientated uses, from office work, education, and home management to entertainment and finance. You will find software for FreeBSD that will fulfill your needs on a day to day basis. This is not a comprehensive list of common tasks, it's based upon the things which I personally do on FreeBSD every day, and even then, some things may be missing. The benefits of switching to FreeBSD, even for such a common and simple task as web browsing, are significant. First, if you are on Windows, you get away from the never-ending stream of Windows-specific security vulnerabilities and attacks, and the corresponding never-ending stream of Windows patches and security updates it takes to fix them. Linux is no safe harbour, if you are wondering. For example, System D is a gift that keeps on giving, with major vulnerabilities popping up almost every month or so. That monstrous creeping piece of code is something that will never be allowed in FreeBSD, and thank goodness for that. So what can FreeBSD offer in terms of usability for the internet, the online world, which is a thing we are now so dependent on? Well, in terms of browsers, as you can see, we have browsers such as Firefox, Chromium, which is not shown on this example, and including smaller ones such as Dillo, eLinks, and Doobal, etc. You can do your online shopping, compare prices at your leisure, or maybe you want to pay your bills, or do your accounts, maybe chat online with your friends, colleagues, and family. You can, all available through a modern and safe browser on FreeBSD. Just as a side note, over the lockdowns in the UK, in 2020-2021, I used GhostBSD extensively on the children's PCs when it came to homeschooling, accessing Zoom or Microsoft Meetings, or whatever it's called, with no issues at all. So FreeBSD is more than able to allow you to conduct an online lifestyle. If browser-based activities aren't your thing, and you require a more traditional way of accessing your email, IRC or chat, etc., Again, FreeBSD has you covered. I prefer a separate email client than a browser-based session, and I'm old-fashioned that way, and so my email client of choice is Silfeed. But if that wasn't used, Thunderbird, Mutt, Joyita, or perhaps Evolution could be used. If email is too slow, then perhaps IRC is more your taste. There are simply too many clients to list here, but as you may be able to see, I have loaded up just some of them, Hexchat is perhaps the one I would use more if indeed I used IRC more, and I really should. One question I do get asked quite often is, does FreeBSD support Slack, Telegram, etc.? And yes, FreeBSD does have them. There are three main Slack clients, uh, all unofficial, unfortunately. There's Diligent, ScudCloud, and TeamWord. And an official client would be nice, but you can't have everything, I suppose. But it's better news for Telegram users, as there is actually an official desktop Telegram app for FreeBSD. So, that's nice. After all the browsing and messaging, etc., a little relaxation is in order. And I like to listen to some music while I am writing scripts, or just lounging in the office. And what better than a simple music player? Again, FreeBSD doesn't disappoint. You can choose heavy. You can choose heavy players, such as KDE's Amarok, or lightweight ones, such as Music on Console or Mock. Each have their strengths and weaknesses, so it's up to the individual to decide which fits their needs the best. Here you can see the G Music player in action. It runs smooth and well, and plays the tunes on online radio as well. It runs smooth, and it runs well. And it plays the tunes you want on online radio too. Noise, as the kids probably don't say anymore. I'll be covering audio more in the second part of this video, but in the meantime, back to work. Here you can see that I am in the middle of the script for this video, whilst at the same time listening to some uh, banging tunes from the Stranglers and Erasure. I do like some 80s music. This is one thing I like about FreeBSD, and that it doesn't choke when you are doing several tasks. Even transcoding or compiling some software from parts at the same time doesn't affect things, and it's a truly great OS. FreeBSD isn't short of office-related or home office small business applications. You will, of course, have heard of LibreOffice, the excellent office suite available for all the major platforms, but there are others as well, some more known than others. The word processor I prefer to use is AbbeyWord, and the spreadsheet I also prefer is Numeric, 
because it's something I've used for years. As you can see, there are quite a few options to choose from. And the great thing is, is that they can be compatible with what you currently use. Unless, of course, the document sheet formats, etc. have changed during the making of this video. Uh, one thing to mention is that I can't show all of the available word processors or spreadsheet applications. There's not enough room on the desktop. I've just noticed that in the ports there is WPS Office, so I'll leave that for another video. It's now easily installable, so there's no need for other workarounds that I might have shown in previous videos. So, once the editing and the spreadsheeting has been done, then you will need to perhaps place the results in a portable, say, document format, a PDF. And again, FreeBSD has the tools you need. Just taking a look at the list of PDF related items in the package port search engine on the FreeBSD website shows too many to cover. But suffice to say that LibreOffice will probably do what you need with little fuss if you are creating a PDF. Also, it's worth mentioning that LibreOffice includes a database and a graphic application as standard. So unlike some other office suites you may encounter, you get everything you need without spending a penny upgrading to the premium version to get the features you require. If finance is something you do on your computer, and we will at some point, probably, then FreeBSD can help you here as well. Again, you can see there is a good selection to choose from, all QuickBook compatible, and able to load in the .qif files, as I have here. Uh, it's an example file, so I'm not showing anything private just in case you were looking. We've already covered MP3 players in part one, so now it's time to look at what's available in terms of general audio software. In this category, there's simply too many to list, never mind to show. But for an example of what's out there, here are some gems. You have the obligatory CD Ripper software, MP3 tagging, sound conversion, CD DVD writing, as well as an effects engine for real time effects and an audio visualizer. FreeBSD isn't short of tools to manipulate audio, rescue audio files, or even encode audio as a picture. Uh, not quite understood how that works, but it sounds very cool indeed. But before we can listen and manipulate the audio, we first need to create it. So although there are quite a few ways to capture audio, the two shown here, Audacity and Traverso, are examples of a more user-friendly and quick approach. But I'm being a little unfair. Traverso is considered to be a DAW, or D-A-W, a digital audio workstation. And it uses Jack, something which I found to be difficult to get grips with, and I'll touch on that later. Suffice to say that these two, on their own, will give you all you need for audio capture, even if Audacity has had some of its shine rubbed off a little lately in the tech press. When it comes to DAWs, FreeBSD isn't short of options, which is a great thing. You have the aforementioned Traverso, but you also have Muse Sequencer. Muse is a MIDI audio sequencer with recording and editing capabilities written originally by Werner Sphere. Apologies for the pronunciation. And it's now developed and maintained by the Muse development team. Muse aims to be a complete multi-track virtual studio for FreeBSD. But like Traverso, it uses Jack, so if you have that running, you are good to go. Otherwise, it's a no-show, which is a shame. It would be great if it was able to use FreeBSD's OSS by default. So, we have Muse Sequencer, a MIDI audio sequencer. We have Traverso, which is a versatile digital audio workstation. And Z Rhythm, a little bit of Ardour, and a little bit of Jalv. Each suited to different levels of experience. The one DAW not shown is perhaps the more widely known one, and that's Ardour. And I've not shown it because without Jack up and running, it really doesn't get past the initial small config screen, so it's uh, not very exciting. When it comes to video editing, from Caden Live to PTV, you'll not go without choice either. And as you can see here, it's none other than Caden Live in action. In fact, I made it in this video with it, and it's all very strange to see yourself editing a video which you edited and then uploaded. But anyway, it works flawlessly, and I've not experienced any crashes, etc., as some people report. But then again, those reports were from Linux users, and uh, I'm just saying. If Caden Live is too much, and perhaps you want a lighter alternative, then Shortcut seems to be okay. It may not have all the options that Caden Live does, but it does seem snappier to use. 
Then there is OpenShot. Uh, now, OpenShot was my first video editor on FreeBSD, and some of the first videos I made were in OpenShot. In fact, I've used all three of these editors at various times since starting making YouTube videos in, in 2017 and 2018, settling with Caden Live in the last couple of years. OpenShot is a fun, beginners friendly video editor and a great way to introduce someone to the concept of video editing. It may seem colourful and quirky, but that's exactly what makes it so great. But we're not finished yet with video editors. Uh, there are some more, uh, albeit lesser known ones or less friendly, such as PTV or AVDMUX. Although people have used these to great effect, so I guess it's down to personal taste. For everything else video related, and very much as the situation with the audio side of FreeBSD, there are too many to choose from. From video format converters to recording studio software to players, there's choice color. On screen you can see we have a few video players running, albeit a studio, handbrake and even a console video player, uh, which is pretty trippy. So when someone says that FreeBSD doesn't have any software, you know better. I've been interested in computer animation ever since the early days of the BBC Micro and the Acorn Archimedes in the UK, whilst I was at school. And through using an Amiga, that interest continued. So it's a great thing that FreeBSD 2 is more than capable to do this with such great applications such as Pencil, Blender, Dune and OpenTunes. And FreeBSD is more than able to handle any of them and to get your creations done. It's not just moving creations that you can create with FreeBSD, you also have a wide range of choices when it comes to CAD or computer aided design. And there are a ton of options. In fact, too many to fit all on the screen. Here you can see that there is a wide range from the electrical circuit CAD program to a more fun Lego based designer. Each and every one on FreeBSD and each and every one able to get your work done. And I think that's the whole magic of FreeBSD. It can get your work done if you are a server based operation, it can get your work done if you use it as a desktop system for the home or small office. And it can get your work done if you are a workstation user. Yes, I know that there aren't some of the big name card graphic suites available, but that's also true for Linux users too. But where there's a will, there's a way. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, yeah.